commenting and giving me an idea for content today. I know that this is actually a really hard concept for students. It's even hard for my college student that goes to Yale, right Dalton? It's confusing, right? Today we're going to talk about conversions and see he's not saying anything now but earlier he was like it's even confusing for me. So therefore this is tricky. Now, the metric conversions are a lot easier than the customary conversions that we're going to go over later. Today, I'm going to talk about just the basic metric conversions. You have your meter, liter, and grams. That's what you guys are going to be using probably for your science classes or for whatever. We have a world global market now, and you're going to be taking classes and using these in econometrics. You're going to be using um, these sort of conversions in a lot of classes that you're going to take and they make complete sense because they're just multiplying to the power of 10 over and over again and on this side we're going up we're getting bigger and on this side we're going down we're getting smaller so if I'm going to jump for example from a decimeter to a decameter I'm going to jump two spaces which is two zeros if I'm going to jump from a millimeter all the way to a hectometer, one, two, three, four, that's five. That's five zeros. So millimeter versus a hectometer, that is... 100,000 times bigger. Five zeros. Let's talk about meters, for example. If you take a meter, it's about yay big. I don't have a meter stick with me. It's in my classroom. And if you break that into pieces, you're going to break it up into... 10 pieces first. Those 10 pieces are called a decimeter. One of those 10 pieces is a decimeter. If you take that decimeter and break that up into 10 pieces, you're going to convert that into centimeters. So that decimeter has 10 smaller centimeters in it. If you take one of those centimeters, which is smaller than an inch, and you break it up into 10 pieces, you have 10 millimeters. So that is a very tiny amount. This could be milliliters, that could be liquid, milligrams, that could be weight. So these are very tiny pieces and you can go even smaller than that. Let's talk about getting bigger. So if you have your meter stick and you put 10 of them together, you're going to have what we call a decagram. And sorry, decameter, decaliter, decagram. It's going to be a decameter because it's length. Let's say we're talking about length. And then if you have a hundred meters, a hundred of these together, you're going to have a hectometer. That's a hundred meters. And the one we hear often enough is a kilometer. So a kilometer or a kilometer is when you have 1,000 meters. That's less than a mile, but you know, roughly a pretty long amount of space between a thousand of these to the next one. So when something says you have 10 kilometers to go, that means you have a thousand meters 10 times. That's how many kilometers you have. Let's talk about other things you could measure. You could do kilowatts kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, terabytes. You hear this in computer language often. And so these are other measuring tools that you may use on your computer or this is electricity. Metric measurement makes a lot of sense. Make sure you take notes. You can get conversion tables for metric measurements online. And the next thing we're gonna do is compare that to our customary measurements, which makes little to no sense at all. Okay, so let's reverse to customary measurements. We know that metric measurement is very uh, organized and it's always to the power of 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, or even a million. But customary measurement is very different and that's why it's so confusing for 
kids of all grade levels. It's even confusing for adults, but it's something we use for recipes. It's something we use in the stores. If you go grocery shopping, you really have to understand your basic customary measurements. You also have to understand American customary measurements if you want to be successful on a test because there's a lot of these questions being thrown out there, talking about gallons, converting to quarts, to pints, and it's just a really important thing to, to know the basics of. Take your notebook out, take these notes. It's really something that it would be in your benefit to, to memorize, to have down, but we're gonna start with just your basic conversions, and let's just talk about what a ton is. A ton is 2,000 pounds. It, there's, you know, it's not to the power of 10 to 100. It's 2,000 pounds. Where does that come from? I don't know. It doesn't really matter. That's how it is. And then we have pounds. How much is in a pound? 16 ounces. Why? I don't know. Doesn't really make much sense. How much is a pound? It's about this much. 16 ounces. It's a weight. It's a measurement. So let's talk about pounds versus liquid. We have ounces and 16 ounces is about the same thing as a pound. 16 ounces actually is a pound. If you broke 16 ounces in half, you'd get eight ounces and there are eight ounces in a cup. So I'm pull out my cup. Okay, this is a measurement. If your recipe calls for one cup of something, they're asking you for eight ounces. There's eight ounces in a cup. It doesn't, right? No rhyme or reason. Don't even ask. It doesn't matter. And then let's talk about gallons to uh, gallons to quarts. All right. So this is another one. We got a gallon. This is how your items come in the grocery store. Now, sometimes you could find two liter bottles of soda. That's a metric measurement. We just went over the metric measurements, but this is, again, your customary measurement. This is a gallon. Now, inside this gallon, there's four of these. These are, these are your quarts. And then if you cut this in half, you'd have your pints. And I didn't have a pint container, so I can't pull that out, but a pint is half of this. A pint is two cups. So it does make some sense, right? So if a pint or half of this is two cups, then how many cups are in this quart? Yeah, there's four, there's four cups. You could fit four cups in this quart and then you could fit four quarts in this gallon. So how many cups are in the, in the gallon? That's how we convert that. So we say four times four. Then we know there's 16 cups inside this gallon. And then you get into teaspoons and all that and it gets even more tricky. So okay, I got a cute little measuring. If your recipe asks you for a teaspoon, it's gonna be this one. If it asks you for a tablespoon, it's gonna be this one. And when I gave you my chili recipe, I didn't, I didn't write the recipe down on purpose. I wanted you guys to have to go measure everything. So if I asked you to put two tablespoons of chili powder in there, I wanted you to put two of these and measure it out. If you really, this is a good thing to know too, there's actually three teaspoons in one tablespoon. Why three? I don't know, makes no sense to me, but I know that there's three teaspoons in a tablespoon. So you don't have to know why everything doesn't measure out to the power of 10, 100,000, why it doesn't make perfect metric sense. All you really need to understand is that these are the ones we use in America. And if you want to follow a recipe, it's just good to know that. And this is where you get your half teaspoon, your quarter teaspoon. And sometimes when you're putting salt in and things, it wants a smaller measurement. There's a couple other things that you'll hear. Sometimes you'll hear the word a bushel and a peck. So I, I, I needed a bushel of this or a bushel of that. And in the, you know, back in the day, people would go get a bushel of something or a peck of something. What is that? Well, a peck was about two gallons and a bushel was four times a peck. So it was four of those. I, you might need that someday. I don't know. But let's talk about, so we went over teaspoons, teaspoons, 
three of these to one of these. We talked about a cup being eight ounces. We talked about there being two cups in a pint or four cups in a quart and four quarts in a gallon, which would make this 16 cups. Then you get your crazy math question on your math test and it's saying, Pablo is making punch for his class party. Pablo is going to fill one gallon containers with his punch. If Pablo has 17 quarts of punch, how many gallon containers does he need? So this is when we have to convert our quarts into gallons and then we have to account for the overage or what we call interpreting a remainder. Because if we fill the gallons up completely, but we still have another quart left to put in a gallon, we don't want to just throw that punch away. We want to, and again, it's asking how many gallon containers to use all the punch to fill them in gallon containers. So that means that last gallon container might not be completely full. Now we already talked about this. We talked about there being four quarts in every one gallon. And so I'm saying if, if I have 17 quarts of this and I need to fill the gallon container, you could fit four of these in each gallon. You do the 17 divided by four, which gives you four gallons with one quart left over. And I'm not going to waste it. I'm going to pour it in a fifth gallon container. So how many gallon containers are you going to need? You're going to need five gallon containers. Now, I know the math writers who wrote the test, they know that you could fit 20 quarts into five gallons because five times four is 20. That's not why they asked you the question. They asked you the question because they wanted to know if you could interpret the remainder and account for that. So see, these are the kind of tricky questions they give you, but you got this. It's not that hard, but you do have to practice it. It is tricky. It doesn't, it doesn't have any rhyme or reason. It doesn't really make sense as far as where we got those customary measurements from. But the important thing is that you understand the customary measurements. I hope this helped. I hope that you guys can maybe comment below put some questions on there for students to answer. Let's ask some questions that would convert these uh, measurements and so you can really get an idea if you understand it or not. I look for more comments on content I can help you out with. So I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.